Hello everybody, welcome to my computer, not the shop today. Today we're going to be talking about razor geometry and I figured it'd be a little bit easier to do it on this virtual razor that I made real quick than it would be to do on, you know, a real one because I got this big example here. So what is razor geometry? You hear the term thrown around a lot. Uh, what is it? So basically razor geometry is going to be the distance from here to here. So that's going to be your thickness, and that's typically not talked about in a sales pitch or, or some, maybe something when you're looking in the buying one. That's not talked about, but this is right from here to there. That's going to be your 6 eighths, 7 eighths, 8 eighths right there. Um, and what does that mean for you? How do you? Why do people always talk about it as if it's like a like the quality thing? Um, well, it is. So I'm going to explain to you why. So basically, it talks about the geometry of a razor is the angle that these two things create when you're sharpening. So when you sharpen a razor, you may or may not know, but you lay it flat on the stone. So from here to there, that's where the sharpening happens. Um, if you never sharpen a razor, that might come as a surprise, but to a lot of people, I imagine they're like, yeah, no, duh, I know. Um, because this is Jacob Ray Razors and everybody here uh, is very likely a, a razor connoisseur. So what I'm going to do though is show you why that's important. Okay, so I'm going to take that and stretch it on out. So that is our angle, right? Basically, what that deter what that means is when we lay it flat on the stone on this line, it makes this angle 15.36 ish. Because obviously I'm not. It's a computer, but I'm not using it the way a CAD person would. So that line makes 15.3 degrees from there to there and that's that's pretty good uh, what we're looking for as a, a razor maker is 10 to 15 degrees that's the main difference between a razor and a knife a knife is going to be 15 to 30 uh, you know even higher depending on the the use application but what is that how can you tell what good geometry is one you can do the math uh, literally it's geometry so you can take just draw like okay if they say it's six eighths and if you can ask and they'll reply and tell you it's going to be a quarter inch thick or half inch thick whatever it is you can do the basic geometry just by it by drawing a line here to the equal to the length that they said drawing a line at 90 degrees to that down the middle and then measuring it with a protractor and that should tell you what sharpening angle it is um a few things to to really be concerned about when it comes to geometry. And and the nice thing about the geometry of a razor is it doesn't matter how big it is, whether it's 6 eighths, whether it's 8 eighths, it's all the same. The geometry won't lie to you. Um, so what I'm going to show you is how to, to use that geometry to, to make an informed decision about maybe buying a razor or about making a razor. Okay, so right here we have a huge monster blade, right? Okay, it's it's a pretty big one. Let's say it's gonna look, it looks to me like a 10 eighths or something oversized thing, and that's fine. Every, you can have those, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, but let me show you what you really should be watching out for here. So if you go ahead and make a large blade like this, and but you don't make your steel bigger, and by bigger I mean thicker, if you don't change this, what you do is you, you drop the angle of sharpening substantially. Now it may not seem like a lot, four degrees is, is whatever, but what that's going to do is it's going to make the steel start to foil as it's called when you're sharpening and it's going to be very difficult to sharpen. Um, one way to make that go away is just to go ahead and use wider steel. So I'm going to go ahead and simulate that just real, <laughs> real poorly, but say we went and bought thicker steel to make a bigger razor and that's what we're going to go ahead and do so we're going to say okay well we bought thicker steel does that work for us and blah 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 you know it brings that up to 16 whatever that's that's better it's going to sharpen easier and all that stuff so what you see a lot from people that are new or maybe they just don't care uh, a lot of times you'll get these razors from, I don't know, people, makers that just don't care. And they'll they'll make larger razors, or maybe they just don't know. Let's say they don't know. They'll make larger razors like this without increasing this size. And obviously, that's going to drop your geometry down substantially. Um, 
and uh, you know the opposite goes into effect as well so we can go ahead and move this over and say we'll just make it that much shorter right and I'm gonna go ahead and measure that geometry real quick now it's at 18 and that's perfectly I don't want to say it's fine what it's gonna do is it's gonna make your razor never get as sharp as the razor that is between right around 15 and 10 10 to 15 degrees so it's it's a tricky it's it's not necessarily a tricky balancing act but by any means uh, it's just these are set in stone rules um, you can you can do this on a piece of paper you don't need a computer you don't need, even need the razor to do it all you need is the size 6 eighths 7 eighths 8 eighths right here and that's not going to be enough for you though you're going to need the thickness of the of the spine so if you if you get a razor that's a little too thin you can always and this is why a lot of people get really upset and they say oh that person you know sharpens with tape okay because all tape does is it builds up builds up builds up and what that does is it it takes a razor that might have poor geometry say that right there that's too big and too thin it's it's a 10 eighths and it's it's too small okay so what that does is it it the tape will just bump it up I mean we're talking about a little bit so one degree two degree three degrees so this is probably five layers of tape or something like that it's it's definitely not something I recommend but if you say go to the store or the store you go to the what is it called like the flea market or something and you buy an old razor and, it, and it's too thin like for example it's been worn down down to here from all the years of sharpening with without using tape it, it it's gonna sharpen it's gonna take off your front it's also gonna take off your side now you're at eight degrees that's a problem you can build it up with tape and that'll bring you back up to where you need to be um, I don't and I would say it's a good practice to use a, a, to use a piece of tape and I mean one piece of tape uh, specifically for the reason that it doesn't flatten out this section um, yeah in time it's gonna change your geometry for example like every time you sharp you sharpen your razor you drop it you drop it you drop it you drop it okay yeah I see that being I understand a lot of people don't like that you know to each their own for me because I typically make straight razors with Damascus steel I don't want to take off this because then you have to come back through with acid and re-etch that whole area and it's just ugly um, so really that's the, the only reason I use one piece of tape uh, is, is to make it look say pretty because how mad would you be if you ordered this beautiful Damascus straight razor and it had this line from where I had sharpened and not etched back so I go ahead and use one piece of tape one piece of tape is only going to affect we're talking like points of a degree so that's up to you if if you're looking to to fix geometry say your razor's too big or your razor's too old whatever it's it's definitely possible to adjust it but that's why a lot of people on forums are going to grumble and complain because it's typically when you're using five, six pieces of tape, it's an indicator of a poor quality blade. That's all. Um, I hope that this explained a little bit to you, you know, making this uh, this kind of this virtual razor. I hope I, I could kind of show you a little bit easier what geometry is. It's just two measurements, really. Well, three. We've got the, the top to bottom, so cutting edge up to the center point of the, of the spine here. And then the center point of the spine thickness. And this one is the one you really should pay attention to because that's the one that no makers talk about. Even I don't because it's it's not something that the customer should typically have to even worry about. Uh, you know, it should just be done correctly right off the get-go. They should The maker should know this is the size it needs to be. This is the thickness of metal that I need to use to achieve a 6 eighths razor or 7 eighths or 8 eighths and so on. Um, but if if you're concerned and you think, hey, that looks a little bit weird, you can always ask someone to measure with some calipers here to there, and then you should be able to say, okay, well, it's a six eighths razor, and they gave me the measurement for A to B, and now I just draw it on a piece of paper, take a protractor, measure it. If you find that it's down in the ten range, you're going to have a hard time sharpening it. Uh, I always like to stick within the right at 15 because it sharpens really well and that's the the limit of how far up you want to go is for shave readiness you start to exceed that 
and you're starting to look at more knife territory. Uh, it's definitely possible to shave, but it's not going to be nearly as comfortable around 15, even down to the 12s. But you start to get in the 10, you're really pushing yourself um, as far as your your ability to sharpen. You put too much pressure, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have some serious problems. You're gonna have foiling. You're gonna have cracks in the blade, and and that's nothing to do with steel. That has everything to do with with geometry. So. Uh, hopefully this gets you a little bit more informed. Maybe it explained why people use tape um, so that they can go ahead and bring that angle up a little bit. Just just be warned that when you're buying a razor, if you're not sure of the maker, definitely get the measurement from there to there, from there to there, and then figure out the angle. If you notice that the angle is too small, maybe pass on the razor or just be well aware that you know you're going to need to use tape but i would rec definitely recommend passing just simply because that means that the maker of the razor didn't necessarily know how important that these two that this geometry is so um that's going to be my video on geometry um i hopefully like i said hopefully this explains something to you if you have any questions please feel free to ask and um uh, let me know if you like this this explanation here using the virtual razor as opposed to using a real world one i just thought it'd be a lot easier i can draw on this one you know i can use the protractor i can show you okay this razor would obviously be not good this one is is pretty nice uh, i figured it'd be a lot easier to do that all right that's going to be it thanks for joining me in my virtual shop and you guys have a good day